How serious is a scoliosis muscular imbalance? Scoliosis is a condition that affects the spine. However, it is associated with muscular imbalance. It's not just the spine that has to maintain its natural curvatures. However, it's also the jobs of the, uh, the tissues that surround the spine, like the muscles and the ligaments and all the tissues that help support the spine and stabilize the spine in its normal position. If the spine has an unnatural curvature, this curvature can affect the muscles in a negative way that can pull the spine and the tissues and the muscles in different directions. And once this has happened, the muscles on one side can become weaker from less use, while other muscles on the opposite side can become stronger and sore from overuse. This muscular imbalance is normally not the cause of scoliosis, but it's a symptom associated with any type of curvature in the spine. And it can become painful and it can become disruptive the longer the scoliosis stays there and potentially as the curve gets bigger. Now, we know scoliosis is a progressive condition. It is very nature for scoliosis to worsen over time. Scoliosis can range from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. The more severe scoliosis is, the more the effects are to the body and to the tissues that surround the spine. As the scoliosis gets worse, it introduces more uneven forces to the body. The condition's uneven forces will disrupt overall symmetry, including muscles and tissues that surround the spine. Now, when we look at muscular imbalance, how does it affect somebody and how does it affect their daily life? And one of the big things it can affect, it can affect the overall movement. The more unbalanced the spine is, the more the surrounding muscles and tissues have to work in an abnormal way to deal with the posture changes. And this typically can affect gait, trunk movement, and it can also affect shoulder movement. A lot of times it can also affect balance and coordination because as proprioception changes, as the body changes its position, this overall symmetry can affect the body's proprioception, which means where the person knows where they are in space. Balance and coordination can also be affected negatively. Also, as muscular imbalance can make activities based on symmetrical movement more difficult because there's asymmetry associated in the movement. However, the body tends to compensate very, very well, especially in children while they're growing and developing. It's when patients become older and live longer with scoliosis that the muscle imbalances become more significant and more inhibiting. When we also look at muscular imbalance, how do we treat it if we really want to try to improve how the patient's functioning? Now, first of all, when it comes to scoliosis, any symptom that's being expressed by scoliosis must be improved by treating the scoliosis first and foremost. Because if you can reduce the scoliosis, you're, you affect everything that the scoliosis is affecting, including muscle imbalance. However, most patients, when they treat scoliosis, they only get the symptoms of scoliosis treated, leaving the condition itself untreated. And this can lead to the problem just coming back and returning and continuing to progressing. So the main focus in treating scoliosis is more likely reducing the patient's overall Cobb angle. And the Cobb angle is a measurement of how, how unnatural the curvature has already tilted. And when we look at a Cobb angle, we normally measure the vertebra on the very top of the curvature and can compare it to the most tilted vertebra in the bottom of the curvature, and this angle is expressed in degrees. The larger the degrees, the more significant the scoliosis. If treatment reduces the Cobb angle, the size of the curvature will decrease along with the effects that the scoliosis is causing. However, we know scoliosis is a structural condition. So we know there are limitations in curve reductions, but when we deal with reducing the curve, now the muscles that attach to the spine can become more symmetrical in size and length. So therefore they become more balanced, but, re but achieving total muscular balance in a patient with a curvature is physically impossible because the end point and the beginning point of every muscle is different based upon the curve presentation. So a lot of patients will, will search, out, search out physical therapy or maybe scoliosis specific exercises to help deal with patients that have um, a muscular imbalance. Now we know general physical therapy has very little effect on scoliosis because it's done very symmetrically. And when we look at symmetrical training or symmetrical exercise therapy for patients with scoliosis, it may increase general strength, but it's not gonna deal with the asymmetry that most scoliosis patients deal with. So what we focus on is something called SSEs. SSEs are scoliosis specific exercises that are designed with the person's curvature in mind. And these to help, to help strengthen the muscles in an asymmetrical manner to help deal with the curve. And these are prescribed uniquely based upon the presentation of the curvature. It's not something that you can just look up and say, okay, I'm gonna do these exercises because I have scoliosis. It's based upon your curve type, where your curve is located, the size of your curvature, and also the flexibility of your curvature. So somebody with experience in treating somebody with scoliosis and pre prescribing these SSEs must be somebody you work with to get the proper prescription. We also know that we can help 
reduce the curvature will help these SSEs perform more more significantly or perform more effectively. So therefore, when you combine curve reduction with the scoliosis-specific exercises, you have a greater effect in improving muscular imbalance. In addition, you can work on restoring the weak muscles to try to get them stronger and the overused muscles to help lengthen them and stretch them so they don't get so sore and tight. Now, we know these SSCs can also help improve posture, can help improve neuromuscular reeducation, can help improve brain-body communication and body positioning. So we know these Dealing with the muscle component with scoliosis is a very important thing. However, the biggest, current with the biggest concern with scoliosis muscular imbalance is really the curve size. Because if you can improve the curve size, stop the curve from worsening, and reduce the size of curvature, restoring muscular balance becomes a much easier process because the muscle shapes are dictated by where the bones start. And because remember, every muscle is attached to bone, not attached to another muscle. So therefore, those muscle positions or muscle length is dictated by the curvature itself. And we know conservative treatment doesn't slowly re rely on just exercises to help improve scoliosis, but it uses it as a component combined with many other types of treatments to help improve scoliosis and the surrounding muscles and tissues of the entire body. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.